News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A state of emergency declared in Ravalli County. Good morning, everyone. Montana Morning for Thursday, June 30th, 2016. Getting ready to wrap up the month. It is a beautiful sunrise out there. If you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, it is glorious. Just the rising sun backlighting the clouds as they're drifting on by. It's 63 degrees in Missoula right now. Our newscast this morning sponsored by Kootenai Creek Village, the maintenance-free active adult community in Stevensville, offering the best of western Montana living. Our top story this morning, Ravalli County Commissioners have declared a state of emergency due to the rapid growth of the Observation Point fire. I spoke with Commissioner Greg Chilcott yesterday. He said this particular fire is unprecedented. First of all, we have not experienced a fire that's blown up this quickly this early in the season since I've been in office, which is going on 14 years. We thought it was just going to skulk around on the rock face of the the observation point, but with the winds and the temperatures, it's blown up. Chilcott explained the reason why a disaster declaration was necessary. In order for us to do evacuation protocols and involved procedures we have and follow Montana law, we have to declare a state of emergency to allow the sheriff and the sworn deputies to do their job. Ravalli County Sheriff's deputies and other emergency personnel have been contacting families in the vicinity of the Observation Point fire and advising them to prepare for possible evacuation. The Observation fire exploded Tuesday evening and Wednesday, doubling in size to more than 600 acres. Fire Information Officer Dixie Dees said it was the strong winds that led to that growth. Talking to our deputy I see this morning, he said, you know, I could not believe it. I was standing there and I was talking to the district ranger and we were looking at the fire and going you know what this is um this is pretty good and literally they turned around and the fire blew up that's how fast the wind came in and the fire went over the ridge according to Dees, the direction of the fire spread has been up and over the mountain not toward the valley where there are more people and structures still the complexity of the fire has changed a new management team and will ar- arrive shortly there will be a type one what we call a type one team that will come in tonight and probably take over the fire sometime Friday. We are expecting winds again today and uh, tomorrow, thunderstorms and lightning. On the eve of the 4th of July weekend, Dees stressed that fireworks are prohibited on federal lands, like the Bitterroot National Forest, and encouraged the public to be extra vigilant. A Billings woman says Barry Beach sexually propositioned her 12-year-old daughter about two months after he was granted clemency for a murder conviction that kept him in prison for three decades. Claire Kindness told the, uh, the Bozeman Daily Chronicle she filed a report against Beach with the Billings Police Department January 13th and has spoken to officers twice since then. The report says Beach picked up the girl, drove her to his home, and asked if he could touch her and whether she liked performing a particular sex act. She told him no and eventually dropped her off at a home. The girl's name and age were blacked out of the report. Beach told the Associated Press Wednesday evening he has nothing to say but, quote, it's wrong what's being done, end quote. State environmental regulators have fined a Great Falls refinery more than $55,000 for violating emissions limits. Department of Environmental Quality officials said in a statement yesterday that Calumet Montana Refining has paid the fine and corrected the violations. DEQ officials said the refinery exceeded nitrous oxide limits during a test conducted in March of 2014. The company also did not adequately monitor sulfur dioxide emissions during that same period. John Rasman of the DEQ told the Great Falls Tribune the agency initially proposed a $100,000 fine, but lowered it after Calumet provided additional information. The newspaper reports Calumet produces gasoline, asphalt, and other products that are sold in Washington, Uh, Montana, Idaho, and Alberta, Canada. In a dramatic statement on the downturn in fossil fuel markets, Montana Rail Link announced yesterday over 500 of its coal cars would be stored indefinitely on railroad tracks between Florence and Missoula. Public Relations Director Jim Lewis said the process of storing the coal cars was done with residents and wildlife in mind. The footprint that we're in, we could actually fit over 1,000 cars and we placed 550 cars just because we put in enough space between the cars to allow for wildlife passage and at crossings we left 500 feet. Lewis said there are thousands of railroad cars in storage throughout the state at this time. We have almost 
3,000 cars in storage between Laurel, Montana and Sandpoint, Idaho. I'd say approximately half of those are coal cars and half are crude tank cars because obviously the oil industry is feeling a lot of the same market conditions that coal is. Lewis said there was some good news, though, for MRL employees that had recently been furloughed. We have started the process to bring those employees back because fortunately we're seeing a big corn harvest develop out of the Midwest, which has led to a lot of corn that was in storage in Iowa and other states. It's starting to move early in an anticipation of that large harvest. So we're starting to call some of those guys back. MRL's press release ended this way, quote, It is MRL's hope that these markets recover soon and we can do what we do best, providing safe and reliable transportation service to Montana businesses and regional rail shippers, end quote. Missoula police are asking the public for help in identifying an individual who is a suspect in two theft cases at Southgate Mall and who was seen Sunday possibly attempting more crimes. Police Public Information Officer Travis Welsh has more. Well, we have some surveillance photos that depict a male who is believed to have been involved in some minor thefts. Those cases are documented here and under investigation, but he's also apparently been seen attempting to get into vehicles by trying door handles on cars. The man was last seen attempting to open car doors at a business parking lot off North Reserve. He was also seen in a newer silver Chevrolet, possibly a Chevy Malibu. He appears to be a white male. In the surveillance photographs, he may have facial hair. He was wearing a white t-shirt with a photograph on the front of it and he has a large tattoo on his right arm that extends from his elbow. It may go up to his upper arm. It does extend down his forearm towards his wrist, which is probably his most identifying feature. Surveillance video was able to capture part of the Chevrolet's license plate, which begins with the number 54, indicating that the driver may not be from Missoula, but could be coming into town from Mineral County. Glacier National Park is set to start offering visitors free shuttle service along going to the Sun Road this weekend. The Flathead Beacon reports daily shuttle service will begin uh, tomorrow and continue operating through Labor Day weekend. Park officials Jim Foster said limited shuttle service to Logan Pass from Apgar Visitor Center will continue through September 18th in response to a growing demand. The free shuttle service is wheelchair accessible and available on a first-come, first-served basis. Regular shuttle bus service for the west side of the park, which will operate through September 18, begins each day at 9 a.m. The east side service begins at 7 a.m. and will continue running also through Labor Day weekend. And what appears to be a tongue-in-cheek social media movement to mark June 29th as a day to celebrate heterosexual pride has become one of the day's top online trends. Hundreds of thousands of tweets have been sent uh, yesterday with the hashtag heterosexual pride day. The idea of such a day has outraged many. One of the top responses comes from British comedian Dapper Laughs, who rhetorically asked on Twitter, what's next, breathing air day? Others have flooded the hashtag with gay pride memes and other mentions of support. The Twitter user who first tweeted it declined to comment to Associated Press. It's not clear if the account's intent was serious or satire, but there appears to be no formal heterosexual pride day. Just in case you were wondering. News Talk time now, 613. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Mostly sunny skies today with a slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm. Daytime highs will top out right around the 90 degree mark. A few isolated evening thunderstorms, lows in the mid-50s. Sunny and windy on Friday. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13.